If you've ever wondered what actually is going to determine my future, is it where I was born or my mom and dad? Is it maybe the education that I'm able to achieve, the knowledge that I'm able to attain? Are these the things that determine our future or is it something else? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today on Feature Faith Fridays. I'm glad that you're with us. Stick around. We're going to get right into it. Hey, what's up, everybody? I am Pastor J.T. Clark. I'm broadcasting live from Family Worship Center in Columbia, South Carolina. So glad that you're here with us today. Wherever you're watching from, leave us a comment. Let us know where you're watching from or maybe just say hi. We uh, love hearing from your Love hearing from you, love seeing your comments. Uh, I'm broadcasting from Family Worship Center in Columbia, South Carolina. If you don't know much about us, I'll tell you more at the end of the broadcast, but you can learn more at fwcchurches.com. We have churches all throughout the state, and uh, we'd love to have you visit an FWC near you. Today, we are talking about uh, what determines your future. What exactly determines your future? Is it where you were born? Is it the knowledge that you have? Is it the things that um, build up in your life, like like your education, your um, your parents, your parenting, the the influences in your life. All these things matter, but what actually determines the course of your future? I normally start with a story or something else, but I want to start today right with the word because I really believe that this scripture speaks for itself. Uh, so before I get into it, I'm going to check some of the comments and just see how you guys are doing. Uh, like I said, I love hearing from you, Miss Tamika. What's up? Good to see you, Miss Rhonda. Oh, uh, yep, we saw you were out of town. We miss you. I was actually out of town too this past Sunday, but I'm back. You might can tell behind me we've got water baptisms this Sunday. They're going to be awesome. And uh, hey, Miss Stephanie, happy Friday to you. It's good uh, seeing all of you guys on here. I know that uh, there's a lot more watching than our chatting, so please uh, leave us a comment and uh, let us know. Also, it really helps me if you put the scripture references in the in the chat. Um, on whatever system you're watching from. And it also helps if you uh, just like whatever points I make or anything that I emphasize, I'll probably ask you to do that and you can do that. Let's get right into it. Let's uh, check out Proverbs chapter four. I love the book of Proverbs and uh, this scripture is gonna really uh, make a big impact. So let's, uh, let's, let's get, get going here. Proverbs chapter four, verse 20. My son, give attention to my words, incline your ear to my sayings. Now, the first several chapters of Proverbs are, are basically like lectures. Um, and, you know, most theologians believe it's written by uh, the wisest man who ever lived, King Solomon. And so he's saying, hey, pay attention to my words, which we also know here in Scripture was inspired by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, it's Holy Scripture, which means that not only we... Uh, heeding Solomon's words, but more importantly, we're heeding the words or listening to, adhering to the words of God himself. Then he says this in uh, the next verse, do not let them depart from your eyes, very important, keep them in the midst of your heart, verse 22, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Just not to, I got to get through this to get to the point, but, but just think about that. They are life to those who find them. When you find God's word, it's health to your flesh. Amen. Keep your heart. This is where we're going today. 423. Keep your heart with all diligence for out of it spring the issues of life. So I want to just tell you this right off the bat. What you allow in your heart matters. What you allow in your heart matters. Let's read this same passage from a different translation. Y'all know I enjoy um, seeing what we can get out of the Word of God by looking at different translations. I love staying uh, close to the King James. I like New King James primarily. But let's read it from the NLT. Ready? My child, pay attention to what I say. Pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart. Now catch this. For they bring what? God's word brings life to those who find them. When you get in God's word and discover it, when you get it in your life, it, what does it do? Brings life to you and healing to your whole body. Now catch this. Guard your heart above all else. Above everything else you can guard, above everything else you can keep safe, above everything else you can protect, guard your heart for it. What? Your heart. It determines the course of your life. So is it what, what, uh, what I was born into? Nope. Is it what um, my parents 
taught me, not unless they were teaching you the word of God, because what you believe, what you believe will determine the course of your life. When the Bible talks about the heart, it's talking about your spirit, your inner man, your, your, the essence of who you are. You know, it's not just your soul, meaning your mind, will, or emotions. It's not your flesh, most certainly. What determines the course of your life is what you allow in your heart, because what you allow, notice how he started here. I'm going to backtrack a little bit. We're going to come back to 23. Notice how he started. Pay attention to my words. Incline your ear. Don't lose sight of them. So what you hear and what you see matter. So you need to be hearing. You need to be hearing the word of God. All right. And you need to be seeing the word of God. Right. And then uh, that they bring life and healing. Guard your heart above else, for it determines the course of your life. What you hear, what you see, get down in your heart, and they determine what you believe. They'll determine what you believe. You don't determine the course of your life, but what you've loaded in your heart or what you believe will determine the course of your life. So, number one, I want to tell you this. You need to watch what you hear. You need to watch what you hear. You need to be careful what you allow in, in your ear gate. And we talked a little bit about this last week, but I'm going to dive into it a little bit further. Uh, Miss Selena, it's good to see you. Brother Ben, good to see you on here. What you hear matters. Now I'm looking at, uh, again, I can't see everybody on here because the numbers are way higher than who's chatting. Oh, my, my grandmother's on here. Hey, Bobby, good to, good to see you. I, I know the ones, at least that I'm seeing chatting, you're hearing the word every week. You're either attending at one of our churches or whatever, and, and, and you're hearing the word every week. That's great. But what else are you hearing? What can you guard your heart from that you're allowing in, that you're hearing or that you're seeing because it, because it matters what you believe? Now, you might say, okay, I've heard that before, but stick with me because I'm going to give you a couple things after this, this verse 23 scripture that you might never heard for, before. And that uh, if you have heard, heard before, like me, I, as I was reading this today, was reminded of its importance. So stick around because this isn't, I know you're like, I know, I got I to gotta pay attention to what I hear. I mean, that's why I go to church every week. Yeah, but what else are you hearing? What else are you hearing? I'll tell you a story real quick in this next minute and a half. Ready? When I was in high school, I started listening to rap I, and I loved it. I got speakers in my car, big, bassy, boomy speakers, and, and then eventually got TVs in my car and a bunch of ridiculous stuff I didn't need. But anyways, I got all this stuff in my car because I loved rap, and I still love rap. I know I'm white. Might shock you. I love rap, and I, like, I know rap. Like I know good rap from bad rap. I can tell you. I, that's why I didn't like Christian rap back then because it wasn't good. They didn't, they didn't have good, they weren't, they weren't, they didn't have good beats. They didn't have, the, the lyrical content was trash. It just, you know, I mean, it was biblical, but it was, it was just, you know, not good. Not good rap, right? Um, since then, Christian rap has come a long way. But back then, I started listening to all that. Now, at the time, I was attending church. I was, I was in church. I was doing all, uh, all the things a good Christian boy should do. And I loved the Lord. I, I want you to notice this. I love the Lord, but I was listening to rap, talking about girls and talking about parties and talking about all that. So then when I got to college and got around all of that, the, 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 got introduced to all of that, I was attracted to it because I had been listening to it for years. Now, I had also been listening to church. I knew it was wrong, but I was, I was attracted to it. It was almost normal to me because I had been listening. I had been hearing about it for years. What you hear matters and it will drastically affect how you it does affect how you believe because Romans 10 17 tells us for faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God Miss Thompson what's up from Essex Virginia is that Virginia VT Vermont Vermont oh that's right you're um amen okay I know who you are I, won't, I, won't, I was going to say whose family you are, but you might not want me to say that. But I'm just glad you're on. That's great, Miss Angela. Listen, so what do we know? Uh, point number two, you might can guess it, Then we need to pay attention to what we, what we hear. We also need to pay attention to what we see. You know what? For the sake of time, those, those two thoughts go together. So I'm going to go ahead and skip to my next point. Ready? We also need to take our thoughts captive. Now, the Apostle Paul wrote that in a, in a, in a uh, New Testament letter 
to one of the churches and he said, take every thought captive that doesn't line up with the word of God, right? So what does that mean? That, that scripture actually literally means to take your thought captive like you would take a, a, um, uh, a person, a thief, and put them in jail, right? The same, the same thought there. Now, how do you do that? Or what, first of all, why, what does that, how does that affect your heart? Well, what you think, what you think will de- help you determine what you want to see and hear, but it also will come out of your mouth. And then you're hearing yourself confess things and you're confessing, which is a whole nother topic, right? It's a bad, bad. If you don't take, take your thoughts captive and say, you know what? That thought doesn't line up with the word of God of where my future, where God wants to take my future. That's what I want to talk to you about today. Where is God taking you? What is your future uh, that, that God has in store for you? He has a future in store for you. He has something in store for you that's going to bless your life, that's going to increase you, that's going to take you higher. God wants to see you succeed and he wants to see you do well. Amen. Just put it, put it in, the, in the comments to build your faith. Say, my future is bright. Just put it in the comments. I'm going to do it myself. My future. That's right. Miss, I love the uh, family. We had their whole family here on Wednesday night, Miss Thompson. I'm, I'm glad they're here. My future is bright. Put it in the comments. I want to see y'all put it. I want to see y'all say it in there. There you go. Starting to see them come through. My future is bright. Okay, so if your future is bright, then what can you do or what is is, uh, determining that future? What you believe. Because what you believe, the Bible says this. Let me give you another scripture. Ready? That out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of the heart. So what I put in, what I see, what I hear, what, what, what's coming in, what, what I'm allowing in, right? That then determines what I believe. And out of the abundance of my heart, I speak. And as we covered last week, life and death are in the power of your tongue. So what, this is why he says right here. Let's put it back up. Verse 23, guard your heart above all else for it determines the course of your life. I see you guys writing it on here. Good. My future is bright. My future is bright. My future is bright. My future is bright. Just say it out loud too. If you're, if you're with your coworkers, have them amen you. They say, what you talking about, girl? Just amen me right now. All right. I got my earbuds in. You can't hear what I'm hearing, but I'm hearing something good. Y'all just need to amen me. All right, here we go. Let's read on. Avoid all perverse talk. Stay away from corrupt speech. So, I'm a little bit ahead of myself, but I know my next point is going to take up a lot of time. So I'm going to go ahead. I know my timer's not quite there, but I'm going to give you a bonus ahead of time point. Pastor JT doesn't normally do that, but here we go, right? Uh, Watch what you say. Watch what you say. So what are we doing? We're watching what we see. We're watching what we hear. We're taking our thoughts captive. And then we're going to watch what comes out of our mouth because, as I've already said, that, that then goes into our heart. So let's keep reading. Look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before you. Look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before you. So all of this is, is working together into what? What I believe. What's in my heart. What, what, what I'm allowing inside of me. If this is not the primary thing you're taking in, that's why... Anytime we, you, you hear somebody say, well, you should be reading the word every day. And you're like, yeah, I know that. But you don't do it. And if you don't do it, then, then everything else you're taking in cannot counteract one 45-minute sermon on Sunday. And that's if you go every Sunday. That's if you go every Sunday. You've got to have the word constantly going in. You need to see it. I encourage you, when you find a really good scripture that builds your faith, what I tell you earlier, Romans 10, 17, faith gets built from the word of God. So you're like, man, I didn't know God would do that for me. I didn't know that his, his, that promise was in the Bible. Maybe you stumble on Philippians 419. My God shall supply all my needs. You're like, oh, what? Okay. God will supply my needs. I'm in need right now. Then what? So now you believe it. Anything else that starts to come in your heart, anything that you see here, you reject it. You take that thing captive. You throw it out. You put it in jail. I, no, I believe this, I don't believe that. And you've got to take it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand up, because this is just, I'm, in my head, okay, I'm still in the shot. you got to, listen, you've got to take it captive, and then let it, 
and you're, you're watching what you say, so a, better, a more positive way to say it would then be speak what, you, what you've then uh, 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 discovered in the word of God and let that come out of your mouth instead, right? Look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before you. Well, what lies before you? God's promises. Amen. Because he already told you in, in verse 20 to incline your ear to my sayings. Don't let them depart from your eyes. Don't lose sight of them. Verse 21, don't lose sight of them. So when he says here in verse 25, look straight ahead. That's what you're looking at. You can't even see me right now. You can't. You know why you can't see me? Because I've got the word. That's what I'm looking at. That's what I'm focused on. That's what my eyes are, 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 are focused on. So when I, you know, uh, uh, have something come in my life that's contrary to this, I fix my eyes on this. And that's going to help determine my, not help, that will determine my future because it's going to determine what I believe. Amen. 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 I hope y'all are enjoying this. Let me know in the comments if you're enjoying this. Let's keep going here. Uh, ready? Mark out a straight path for your feet. Stay on the safe path. Uh, verse 27. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. All right, these two go together. Mark out a straight path for your feet. Stay on the safe path. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. Not last and final point for today. Don't get sidetracked. Don't get sidetracked. And how do you do that? By following the word of God right here. Ready? You mark out a straight path. So what's my path? You know, I, I'm not, I actually like when people give, they have uh, uh, um, uh, goals for the year and they have ideas for the year, things that they're, you know, what are, what are my plans for the year? Because then that, that focuses their attention for the year. But just make sure that there's a, those are God-focused plans. But then on every plan you have in your life should have a kingdom focus. You know why? Because Matthew 6 tells us that when we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things will be added to you. And then what we've been talking about uh, um, in this season we're in, right, is where your treasure is, your heart will be also, right? So when we're marking out a path, you mark out a path for your feet, stay on the safe path. Now, you've got to look at all this in context. So we've got the word in front of us. So the path that I'm on is a path from the, of the Word of God, right? It ordains my steps. It leads my step. It guides my steps. Now, what's the point of all this? To guard my, to guard my heart, to guard what's, what I'm allowing in. Ready? Don't get sidetracked. Here's what I want to tell you today. This is, I built all this up. I built all this up to tell you this. Ready? The things in life that you allow in, that really good movie you just had to watch, it sidetracks you. Let that sit for a minute. It sidetracks you. It sidetracks you. That, that friendship you don't want to let go even though the Lord has dealt with you and dealt with you and dealt with you and dealt with you and told you about it and talked to you about it and it's been on your heart and the Holy Spirit dealt with you and then you just, you just you can't let them go because you just, you just love her so much and she's so nice. Sidetrack. 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 What's right after this? Don't. Get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. All these things keep your feet from following evil because what uh, uh, your heart determines the course of your life. What's in your heart determines the course of your life. Think about it like this. If your physical heart is affected, if what you have, like I'm talking about like an actual heart, like you have heart failure or heart disease, in your physical blood pumping heart, because I'm not talking about that, in, or he's not talking about that in the scripture. But, but think about your physical heart for just a second. Everything in your body gets affected by that. It affects the blood flow to your brain, which, which affects everything. It affects the blood flow to your organs, organs start failing. It, it, affects, it affects everything, your physical heart. So why, then when God's, why does he refer to our spirit life or our spirit man uh, as the heart? Same thing. If your heart's not right, if what you're allowing into your life is not right, it affects every facet of your life. It affects all of it. It affects all of it. It affects all of it. 
You've got to, above all else, with all diligence, with everything you have, guard your heart. Guard what you let in. Guard what you allow in because it'll keep your feet from following evil. It'll keep your feet from following evil. I could obviously get a lot of uh, 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 other points and other things to pull out of there, but I think that's good for today to allow us just to, to focus there. Listen, you have a bright future. You have a bright future that God wants to bless you with, that God wants to take you to, that God wants to to do in your life. And by guarding your heart, you'll get there. By guarding your heart, you'll get there. Last last and final point. Last and final point, I'm going to let you go. Notice nowhere in this passage of Scripture does it say, ask God to guard it. We have a responsibility as believers to guard what we allow in. To make sure that we're building. If you read the word, it will build your faith. If you hear the word preached, it will build your faith. It has to. That's what God said it would do. It will do it. Right? So that's a given. I venture to say, everybody who's watching this video, that's the case for you. I'm very confident in that. So then why are we instructed here to guard our heart and guard all these facets of our life? Because that's our responsibility to protect. I don't even have time to go into the, the parable, parable of the sower. But when Jesus told that parable, he was talking about how the word gets sown and all these things in life. The devil comes and, and snatches uh, the, the, the worries and cares of life. All these things steal the word from us. That's what the devil wants to do is steal the word. I want the last thing to put in the comments. Ready? The devil's not stealing the word from me. The devil. Hey, Sarah Sides, what's up? The devil will not steal God's word from me. Amen. I love you guys greatly. I want to thank you for watching online. Once again, if you have not subscribed, especially on our YouTube channel, which is uh, uh, the main place I would encourage you, get on there, like the video, subscribe. And if you turn the notification bell on, you'll get notified when we go live or when we release a new video. And FWC Churches. That's where you need to go. If you found this video somehow, somebody shared it with you, somebody uh, um, hit that share button and maybe text it to you to encourage you, then you need to find a family worship center near you. We have so many great churches in our state. My pastor, Pastor Steve McCart, is in Florence, South Carolina. He would love to have you. Pastor Justin is in uh, Georgetown, South Carolina. He would love to have you. We have a great church in Sumter, South Carolina. And then I'm here in Columbia, and we would love to have you. Go to our website. Check it out. Until next time, hey, if you're a part of FWC Columbia, baptisms this Sunday. Can't wait to see you there. Spread the word, spread this message, share it with somebody, and we'll see you next time.